Okay, so this is a quick Nomad guide to Debian 8 because it looks a little different from Ubuntu so I think this is a worthwhile quick uh, quick tour of, of Debian and how it differs. So first of all, this is the log on screen. You can see there's some icons in the top right hand corner. Nowhere obvious to log in. If you press a button or you drag up then the logon appears. I think this is the last logged in user, which is me. Uh, but before we go there, let's just explore these icons up at the top. So we've got this one here is selecting the different keyboard layout. I've got a UK keyboard, so I'll stick with that one. Uh, this one here is to do with turning your local area network connection on or off, or adjusting the sound if you've got the sound plugged in uh, with connected, so that looks good. And this one is to do with, oh, that one. Oh no, they're all the same. Maybe they don't do much until you're logged in. Let's uh, log in. So I'll type in my password, press enter or click on unlock. It takes me to the main screen. So if we go over here now, and drop this one down. We've got a few more buttons uh, added on the end. We've got settings, lock, and power to turn the thing on and off or restart. So let's go for settings. So these are user settings. Uh, we can change our background, double click, double click, choose something different. Uh, I'll go for that one. Uh, X to close. Okay, we've got a background. Let's go for settings. What else can we do? So power. So we have some power saving options. Suspend. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what that is. Some screen saver type things. So those are user options. Let's uh, get more into it. So here we have uh, the word activities. We've got uh, the day of the week and the time and the ones that we saw before. If we click on activities, it changes to bring up a list of commonly used applications down the left hand side and a little box you can type things in. Uh, if you click on that one at the bottom it expands to show you the applications on the computer. Sc mouse scroll wheel to go up and down or you can just type the name of an application into the box. So let's do the standard ones. Let's go for users users. So this looks like Ubuntu. In order to get anything done we have to unlock and make ourselves an administrator. So we type unlock. We type in the roots password which is something different. Try that. And that's unlocked. And now I can add to the users. I can change their passwords. I can do that sort of stuff. Let's get rid of that. That's definitely worth some points. Other settings. Click in here. First of all we'll go for user settings. So if we go tweak, there's a tweak tool. And the tweak tool, when you double click, allows you to adjust the appearances of the environment, but the critical ones here, you might find others. We've got startup applications, we might have something in here, or power. When laptop lid is closed, I'll just have to move this window over a bit, suspend. So that's the security risk because your computer would go to sleep, somebody else could come over and lift the lid and it would unsuspend and you'd be, still be logged in. So that should be log out might be worth a point. Uh, and there's probably some other options in Tweak Tool. Now getting further in, if we want to get a terminal, click on Activities to get the search. Type in Terminal. Double click on Terminal and we have a terminal as ourselves. Now in order to get useful stuff done we need to be root. So normally you would type sudo su minus enter and it would 
prompt you for your password and become root, but sudo by default is not installed on Debian. So you have to use the other command, which is just su space hyphen. And now it's asking you for the root password, not your own password. So I'll type that in. And now I'm root. Okay, so let's get some stuff done. So the first thing you want to check is whether you've got um, connectivity to the internet and that um, they haven't fiddled with your file, your fundamental files that stop you getting to the internet. And the first one to go and have a look at is etc. hosts. Oh, sorry, it's not a file. It's a it's in the etc directory, but it's a file called hosts. So if I cat it, I can see etc hosts, and there's nothing unusual in there. Uh, we might find that they've added extra entries for uh, Google or um, uh, other useful places and given them uh, funny addresses. So I can, we can give, give an example of that if we change the hosts. Here we are in hosts. If we make 127.0.1 make that www.google.com in here and save and exit and if we now go just move can I move that out of the window yes you can activities Firefox okay let's get rid of a few startup windows okay so let's go to Google. It doesn't work. It takes us to some local page. Uh, that's because our host file is wrong. So let's go back to this terminal. Don't worry about the warnings. Oops. We will edit our host file again. Okay. Let's get rid of that line. So you're normally looking for uh, 127 0.0.1 and probably the one below are local addresses. So these are just uh, defining the host itself and are harmless. Uh, I don't understand these version 6 addresses down here so I'll ignore them. So we've got rid of the bad line. We'll save it. We'll come back into here. And we'll refresh the page. And it doesn't change because it's remembered the bad address. Networking restart. Okay, now let's try that here. And we're back at Google. Okay, so that's how to get out of a bad host file. So the first thing we're likely to do is want to update our system. Now, the command you use to do that is apt-get. Right? Now, apt-get is dependent on a configuration file which lives in etc. apt. And the file is called sources.list. Okay, and this is an example of a good sources.list, but let's say that this file had been changed to be bad. So if it's been configured like that, when you come in to do an apd get update, which means go out to all your sources and update them with the latest versions of things, you find apt get doesn't work or if it's been partially changed, you'll find that it goes and looks up some things, but it can't find others. So you need a good APT uh, sources file. Now, there's an easy way to generate one of those if you don't have one. Is you go to Google and you type Debian sources dot list generator. 
Then there's one here, DevGen and Simply Linux in Switzerland. Okay, so what we do is we go to Firefox and we type in Debian sources dot list generator. Okay, which is this one. Uh, we unclick the automatic because we want to select the United States because that's where Cyber Patriot is based. We choose our release. Uh, Debian 8 is Jesse. Stable is stretches uh, 9. We are Jesse, so we pick Jesse. Leave these ones checked. So these are, or more importantly, this includes security and updates, which is the security and, I don't know, fundamental updates. So we like those. We'll leave everything else. Just scroll straight down to the bottom. Ooh, eventually get down to the bottom of the scroll wheel and click on generate. And this calculates, uh, creates a new sources.list file here. Slightly bigger than the window, so select it here. Control A, Control C. Now go back to our terminal. Let's just move this out of the way. Control, get rid of it. G edit, etc. apt sources dot list and replace what's in there with what we've generated. So this should say Jesse in various places, which it does. Uh, and it should say security in various places, which it does. So that's looking hopeful. So we'll save that. Close it. Oh, I save and close it. And now we're back here. So apt get up date. Now it can go out to those various sources and find the latest packages and update its local database. It doesn't um, it doesn't install them at this stage. It just gets a reference to all the new ones, so you, you know what uh, you can install and where you're going to get it from. So just let that run through, and there it's done. And then you can do an apt get upgrade. Oops, up, upgrade, and that will update all the packages to their latest versions. Uh, let's see why. And that might take a little while because there's probably quite a lot to upgrade. Oh, it's pretty quick. Do it again, and it should say everything's up to date. Oh, wow, okay, that's pretty up to date. So that's uh, apt. Now, whilst we're at it, we should really install the sudo command, apt get install sudo, and then we won't have to keep remembering root's password. So that installs sudo. And then in order to make myself a member of sudo, I have to edit etc. group find the sudoers, which is this list here, Oops. and add myself on. Okay, I could have used gedit, I used vi there. So now I can exit. Now back to being me, I can type sudo su. It warns me that uh, this is a scary thing to do, but ask me for my password now. Okay, now this is quite subtle. So um, the first time you install sudo, uh, it doesn't um, reflect changes. So in fact, the way it works is that I've changed my group and it hasn't recognized that I'm in this new group. So what you need to do is log out. So let's click on one of these buttons. Let's maybe lock and then we'll try Drag up, log in again. Oh, that was just a lock. That probably hasn't. Does that do it? Let's try it. 
no, that's not right. I have to actually log out. How do I log out? Okay, I think I have to do this log out. Okay, let's try this log out. Log in. My password. We are at the desktop. Click on activities, pick in the search and type terminal. There it is, double click. So you have a terminal as me, sudo su dash enter. It's asking for my password 101. And here I am. So I don't need to know the root password any anymore. In fact, I can lock the root account and now root can't log in that's probably worth a point okay and then uh, follow the checklist to try and get other points um, the forensic questions will be somewhere I'm not sure quite where they will be because I haven't seen a, a live uh, Debian 8 uh, if you're looking for files there is this filing cabinet down here, and it has a desktop, and you might find some files in here. This is a folder I created. Um, uh, but strangely, these icons don't appear by default in this area here, which is expected in Windows, but they, they should be in here somewhere. Um, that's it. If you want to access your own files from a USB stick, just make sure the VM player is open and then plug your stick in and the files should appear. In fact, um, I've done that here and it's, it appears on this list. Uh, and then you can actually drag them out of here and put them on the desktop. So that's the peculiar view that you get of Debian 8. So see how you go on. Don't be scared that you can't see anything straight away. They are in here, hidden away. Um, and it looks much like Ubuntu once you can start finding things. So if you want to change, delete users, um, change whether they're administrator or not, all this is exactly the same as Ubuntu. It's just in a funny place. Uh, and I, I'll leave the detail for another time. All right. That's it.